Okay, so today we'll study um, some aspects of virus, worms and rootkit. Okay. All right. So these are the things that we'll study today. Some we have already studied virus camouflage uh, in last class, uh, but we'll uh, look at it again, <clears throat> and then we'll look at worms and rootkit okay uh, so we have studied in detail about encryption right right uh, and encryption we have looked at all methods symmetric encryption asymmetric encryption then other methods related to encryption like hashing mac etc and whole idea is that something that we are trans transmitting on internet must be protected right so break so somebody who is uh, like mallory who is in between she uh, if she wants to get the information uh, then she has to find out key to decrypt okay so decryption uh, so so techniques we have studied so far uh, use encryption right at both end so we encrypt data and decrypt here and so on uh, so in, encrypt data here and decrypt at the other end and method we have seen asymmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption but breaking of this is very hard okay breaking is very hard but simple is that you know why not break in here or here that is much simpler okay so we have focused so far that uh, encryption you know we can protect our data by encryption methods or authentication method okay in transit but it is found out that attackers can compromise your computer without breaking encryption because encryption breaking encryption is very hard much simpler is to break into your machine or destination machine now destination may be from an organization like amazon.com or whatever it's it's very hard to break in there so much easier is to break into user's machine to get everything whatever is required from that user right and then somebody gets into your machine then it can do anything like you know it can sniff even the keystrokes that you type okay so like keylogger can be installed here and get all everything that you are doing on a machine right okay so we can say the encryption is not equivalent to all kinds of security you are encrypting something doesn't mean that 100 years now everything is 100 percent safe okay so in order to protect everything you have to ensure that there is a safety at all the both endpoints and safety of data in transit okay so what are the methods to secure this endpoint we have studied some of these right i mean first thing is you know like using password two factor authentication and then uh, yeah Okay, and many other methods. Okay. Malware can get into your system by various methods. We have studied many of these, like phishing email, search engine results can be malicious, may give you a link, and you click on the link, you may download unwanted malware. Okay. A web edge, uh, sorry, web page ads. Now, you know, you have gone to a website and there is an advertisement. Uh, a website actually is rendered onto your machine, your laptop or mobile, and there is an advertisement out there. Okay, if you and you don't know who is putting that advertisement, it may be malicious. Okay, and that ad may take you to a site, and from there it can download automatically download uh, a malware onto your machine. Okay. 
okay or you can uh, actually you may want suppose you want to print a file okay and you find and you have a printer possibly at home or somewhere and you want to uh, print uh, and you find out that the software says that the device driver for printer is missing or printer driver is missing what do you do then you google it to get the printer driver for your printer say hp 4300 or whatever okay and what do you do then you download it where do you get it did you ever think that something you have downloaded could be malicious you know if you are downloading your software from any site that gives you a driver there's a good probability that you are getting it with embedded malicious software malware okay basically a repackaged malware it may have device driver along with a malware okay and it will uh, execute when you execute that software that you have installed actually you have installed also malware into it or user may be tricked to install executable that are pure malware or contain hidden functionality okay now something that we are interested is something is called site visit site visit website visit that may result into software installation without your knowledge you go to a website and that downloads automatically without your permission a software into your machine and it's called drive by download okay i want you to study that the mechanism of the, this right so basically it's an unintentional download you you don't want you just visit a site then how is it possible okay All right. So this is possible because of there may be some problem either in your browser or the, or or the OS. Okay. So so what may happen is that this website where you have gone could be a, a genuine website, but it has been infected. There's a possibility that the good website, a genuine website, is infected by cyber criminal okay and the website owners may also not know that it has been infected and that will download some small piece of code which will uh, which will execute on your machine and maybe a javascript and get the remaining part of that malware from somewhere okay so uh, so javascript play a big role in drive by download kind of feature or it's not a feature is a is a is a is a threat okay all right so drive by download can install into your machine key loggers backdoor and root kits key logger we know it's a, it's a, basically whatever your type is logged and then logged means that it is stored somewhere in a file and that file is sent to cyber criminals because your machine is connected to internet and then uh, this key logger or a bot in your machine will take input from key logger or key logs and then send it to cyber criminals rootkit will study today what is the backdoor backdoor we have discussed that backdoors may be there into your machine installed by a cyber criminal okay a cyber criminal may want to uh, get into a machine it somehow is able to put the bot into your machine and first thing bot could do is that it will create a backdoor is basically it, it, so through this backdoor cyber criminals can do a lot of things they, they can log in they can get into your machine and they can look at the data they can transfer data to themselves and so on and so forth that's without you noticing it right it's like a thieves can create are creating an additional door into your house which you are not aware of okay 
all right so this is a method uh, browser visits a genuine looking website or genuine website and that will have a javascript or something and that will transfer the redirect uh, to some other website it's called distribution page and that will download to your machine malware okay all right so please uh, read about it i i don't want to spend much much more time and you can google it and get try to find out drive by download kind of bug now note that whenever your machine is downloading something without your permission actually you are getting a malware okay all right virus yesterday we studied in brief about virus how can virus can hide itself or can change its form or roop okay in hindi you say how yeah, how can we change the roop or uh, you know form of itself such that it evades detection okay so there are various methods first is none of course it does not want to hide second is it can encrypt the virus part can be encrypted now uh, is encrypted it means that uh, here is not normal code okay so it it will in some aspect evade detection or it can change its form okay by using different kind of encryption or basically diff every copy of the virus will have different encryption using different key or iv and thirdly it can change its own code okay so these are the four forms first is where it does not want to hide itself there is a virus code okay it and this attached to normal program code okay so this is unencrypted virus so it will remain the control will come here it will normal program will execute at the end virus code is executed or this virus could be right in the beginning it could be here in the beginning so it will be executed first and then normal code will be executed virus code could be in between or you know or part of the main code is where this virus code can be there so after some normal code control can come to the virus code and so on okay so this is unencrypted without any camouflage camouflage uh virus can be attached in its own form right okay okay now there is other thing is now note that it is a program code and when this get uh, compiled this also gets compiled and gets executed right so there is a possibility that, so in the hard disk you can have complete exe file of this exe file of this uh, present right okay so second is that encrypted virus so this is a uh, normal c code okay and then there is a encrypted is encryption here of the code and it means that there should be a, some key right by which the, it will use some encryption method some encryption method right and then maybe it's just uh, it could be um, say aes or des because same key will be used for decryption okay so key should be somewhere here in decryption layer okay so this virus will remain in the system okay now why we are why cyber criminals are encrypting virus code okay just to evade detection all right because and when it ex gets executed okay before execution what it will do is that it will use decryption layer and the key to decrypt 
the square root score and then this all this will get compiled and will like, get executed okay now this can also get detected because decryption layer if you know if uh, is there in hard disk right all this and if antivirus program looks for some signature it will look for detection layer which a decryption layer which will remain the same so it will have some known pattern for decryption layer and will look for those patterns and if finds one then it will get the virus so will it detect the virus any question okay what else can be done if you are a vi virus writer how can you evade detection okay we here we have said that we will encrypt a, vi a virus is encrypted now the key remains the same and iv initialization vector also remains the same now what you can do is that you can change the key and iv okay so this is the main virus code original virus okay and uh, you use some a virus writer will use some encryption function use some key to encrypt the virus and there is a decryptor code so this is what we have done earlier also right okay now what can be done of course a decryptor code will say that use the key to decrypt the encrypted virus then execute the decrypted virus right okay so in case of polymorphic virus so this was a normal first case now what it can be done is that use whenever it makes a copy of itself it uses different key or different iv okay so it will have now encrypted virus code because is encrypted using this key and a part of decryptor code is encrypted propagation code which says propagation code says use new key to, new key to decrypt the virus and spread the encrypted virus with decryptor code okay read it again use a new key whenever make a copy of it use a new key okay and spread the encrypted virus with decryptor code and then attach decryptor code and, and spread it okay all right okay so this code says that use every time a new key now if you use a new key or new iv then this code will look different every time this key is different the encryption will be different encrypted output will be different okay okay and then so uh, it will evade detection okay so these two copies of virus use different keys everything but short descriptor code looks different so only decryptor code remains the same but everything else look different the key is different encrypted virus code is different a propagation code is also encrypted using key so this will also look different okay any question all right then how can we find it out suppose you are antivirus programmer code programmer then how will you find out you will something that is invariant there is a decryptor code you will check first you know you have already patterns of decryptor code so you look at descriptor code try to match its signature with what's here and then you can find it out right okay and second is that first is Ah, yeah. virus. Why can't we keep the same virus? Like, what is the use of uh, continuously changing the key in order to encrypt the virus? Because your antivirus software will do what? They will look at the encrypt uh, virus code, right? There's a first way of finding whether uh, there is a virus or not. And this is very large in size, very large in size. Okay, so there's a probability that if you use the same code, in every copy 
then it, uh, it will be detected. Now here, whole idea is to fool the uh, detection software. Okay, so every time you use the different key, so this part is different. Okay, of course, the, the uh, decryptor code remains the same. Because you'll have decrypt the whole thing before uh, this is executed, right? Otherwise, it won't execute in, in encrypted form. Okay. So now detection can be done only through this, through decryptor code, rather than this plus this. Second strategy of uh, defense is that this is safely check if the code performs decryption. Normally, a code should not perform any decryption, right? Okay, so if just check, the, look, take the code, put it in the sandbox. Sandbox is kind of protected environment where you can look at the behavior of this code and see if there is any decryption happening or not. If the decryption happening, then you can further analyze the code. Okay, all right. Now, third is that metamorphic virus. Now, in, in polymorphic, we have seen that the same thing, but different color. Now, you can see the whole shape also changes. Okay, the, see, in polymorphic, the code is actually the same, but you are using different key to encrypt uh, for encryption. So, the output of encryption encrypted virus looks different. Now, here you are also change, trying to change the code itself. So virus is going to try to change its code. So basically, each time the virus propagates, it generates semantically different version of the code. Okay, basically the code which does which is almost similar, but with minor changes. The code also changes, right? So it will perform same high level function but with a minor difference in execution. Okay, semantically slash syntactically on a chain. All right. So it basically it mutates a virus body. It changes this code, the changes the code of the virus. So how can a virus change its own code? It's like mutation of virus, right? Like we say, COVID virus has mutated to different form. Similarly, this code is mute, mutating itself to different form. In this possible that you also include a code rewriter in the virus, with the virus program, right? That will change the code randomly each time. How can change code be changed without getting into any compilation error? Okay, you can renumber the registers if you have studied hardware, there are number of registers, right? Okay, and then instead of using one register, you can use safely use different register. Okay, so change the order of conditional statements. If then else, then you can just change it, right? If then else, then if not condition, then something, then something. So all this can be done. Reorder independent operations, right? You have seen in the code, you know, code executes sequentially, right? Now, this ideally the second instruction should depend on the first instruction, right? And so on, so on. But there are many instructions which can, which are not dependent on whether it executed first or second, right? And then you can change the order of this. Okay, you can, for example, insert NOP, no operations, right, and so on and so forth, right? So that way the code changes. So add some code that does nothing useful. Okay, so you have code, and then add some code that, that does nothing, like NOP or do something, plus add some numbers, but don't use the results, right? Okay. All right. So now what uh, is happening is that, th so this is virus code version one. And because of the rewriter, every time 
virus propagates, it will change the body of the code and also change its own body. So, read the writer also gets changed. Okay. Note we are not talking about encryption here. Okay. So, of course, they will also be along with this normal code to which the virus attaches. So, this is a virus code version 1 when it propagates, right? It changes, uh, it uses uh, code writer or rewriter which changes the code and also changes its own code using same logic. So, rewriter says construct a semantically different version of this virus and spread the new version. So, and the rewriter code itself is rewritten. You can see the difference in the color. Okay. Now, how can you detect this kind of virus? How can you detect this kind of virus, right? Every time it changes, it mutates, right? It, it's a whole code is different. So, this is, so what is the signature of this and signature of this? It's all different. Okay, now you look at the behavior. Okay, and then you can find out. You can do behavioral dissection. What a virus of this kind will do. Okay, so instead of analyzing syntax, okay, or code, you look at the behavior. Okay. Now, you know that you can do this, then attack, attackers can also adopt a strategy to subvert behavioral dis detection, right? Okay, for example, it will say that I, you know, you can, uh, writer can write a code in such a way that this virus will execute only after a certain period of time. Once it executed, then there is a gap of few days, a few months, and then it will re-execute, right? So, there can be delay analysis, okay? And then it can have some intelligence, it can detect the code is being analyzed and change a different behavior, all right? But antivirus, again, program can look at some of these strategies and can write. So, there is a continuous war between malware writer and antivirus companies, right? Those who write antivirus software. There is something called deep content inspection, right? Deep content is, now we use a word called deep packet inspection. Uh, your IP packet is looked. Normally, in order to find out something is wrong, we only look at the header. Now, you can look at the data inside. Similarly, for the virus program, look at the virus program and look at the the body of the virus and then analyze it, right? And so on. So, these are some of the methods. Then flag unfamiliar code. This could be another method and so on, right? Okay. So, that's all about virus. So, virus is a malware. Of course, this is software, unwanted software. Okay that does a lot of things which are not pleasant okay it's of course is a malware it's written by somebody okay when new virus is created antivirus companies have no clue how to find it out because it's a behavior or it's a, it's a it's code or signature of the virus is not known. Okay, and it takes a while for virus companies to include that signature to detect that kind of virus. Once virus is detected, the files can be cleaned up. Okay, that necessitates us to have always new version of virus antivirus software.
Okay, so you buy, uh, it's extremely cheap, you know, for one, three devices, one year you can get it for 500 rupees, something like this. But once you have it, then keep it updating, right? And once in a while, run onto your whole machine this antivirus software fully. Now, this antivirus software can work both on offline mode and online mode. You know this, right? Offline mode that you say that scan complete hard disk. And it will keep on scanning, you know, thousands of millions of files that your machine has and will take a day to complete this. Alternatively, uh, you can say that whenever I am accessing any file, okay, uh, it should be scanned first, then you are going to use it. Okay, now second method we normally we don't apply because it's always is irritating, right? That uh, uh, and it's uh, it causes delays, right? So we don't like it. Okay, all right. Now let's discuss in brief about worms. What is the difference between virus and a worm? Anyone? In real life also, what's the difference between a virus and a worm? Anyone think about it? Virus is parasitic, right? It needs a medium to propagate like your uh, you're infected uh, once you know your machine is infected and you insert into a pen drive that will also get inserted uh, infected and that pen drive you take it on another laptop then that also get infected so it needs a medium to propagate like covid virus right if you are sitting in a room with no contact from outside and no fresh air no air you know doors are all closed then you won't get virus Okay, so uh, any virus requires some medium. Like uh, nowadays, we uh, many of us have have uh, uh, this, you know, cold flu, flu virus, right? If somebody in family has a flu, or if somebody in class is having a flu, the probability that you will also get flu because that person becomes a medium. Okay, warm by itself, it crawls by itself. It doesn't require a medium. Okay, so we can start with some comparison between virus and worms. Viruses propagate, the pro virus propagates by infecting other programs. So it requires a medium, right? And worm in turn propagates automatically by copying itself into a target program with user interaction, uh, with user interaction. Okay. So basically, worm has capability of going from one machine to another machine by itself. Over internet or over network, it uses LAN or internet to propagate, right? So it should have also a code such that it can propagate. And should also have code where to propagate to because your machine, you all always need a destination address, right? So it has also has got to have logic where to send it to and how many to send it to and so on and so forth. Right? Okay. So virus replicates in same machine or across machine aided by human action because it requires a medium or oh, it's a parasitic, right? Virus tend to abuse software features or use social engineering. Social engineering is very common method of having a virus program in the machine. Like you get an email attachment telling you that if you click on this, you will get $100 and you click on it and instead you get a virus program. So this has a dormant stage, right? The virus may remain dormant or inactive for months. Okay, while well, worm does not have a dormant st uh, stage, it continuously spreads. 
So you may find that virus writer has written a worm, sorry, worm writer has, malware writer has written a worm and it spreads to the all machines within a week all over the world. Okay. This uses worm uses software vulnerability like buffer overflow. That of course, of course, we didn't get time to read this. Right? And it's a standalone program. All right. Four stages of virus are dormancy, when virus is dormant, propagation, when virus propagates with the help of some medium, trigger condition, when the payload of the virus or the virus program executes. Okay. All right. So these are the four conditions. Okay. Propagation, uh, trigger condition when it triggers and then execution. So dormant, propagation, trigger, when the, the condition, you can say that virus will be executed on 1st January 2024. That's a trigger condition. And then what will be executed is the payload, the virus code, wherein a worm propagates automatically and continuously. Right? All right, and exploit software vulnerability. Look at these two codes. Virus codes is a loop. Remain dormant until both runs. Proposed gate with user help. And if trigger conditions are met, then execute. And this is a loop. While uh, in computer warm, it propagates over network. This is the first thing. It does not have a dormant state. And when trigger conditions are met, then execute. All right. All right. So, is self replicating? Yes. Population growth is positive. Is parasitic? No. Is standalone. Okay. It doesn't rely on other executable code. All it does is to find out vulnerability in existing code. Okay. Now that also makes us necessary to update our software very often because software writers will find out vulnerabilities like Microsoft and they will send you a patch. Okay. Otherwise virus, if uh, it's a, uh, warm when it's executed, will first thing it will do is to look at the version number of your software. Okay. You're using say Microsoft Word. If you're using Microsoft Word, which is five years old, and, and this virus uh, worm, which has just come to your machine, will immediately find out that you are running old version of uh, old version of software that has so many bugs. So it will start exploiting those bugs. Okay, so it uses holes in networking software. Holes means vulnerabilities in networking software. So now it's more intelligent than the virus. It determines where it can spread, okay, uh, such so that it uh, can spread is infection. It remains undiscovered and undiscoverable. So it will use same evasion, uh, uh, some strategies, so that it can camouflage itself, okay. It causes resource exhaustion, right, okay. So it will uh, be very heavy on the say server, for example, because of repeated infection, okay. Now, if, if, if a machine gets a uh, worm, then system admin just will simply disconnect that machine from the network and then start cleaning it up, right? So, because it will, it will, that machine will be used to further spread the infection, okay, all right. So propagation now, when the wire, the worm has to find out where to spread, okay, so it has to find out targets and then it has to find out the exploits on those targets, okay. So question is that now how does it find where to spread to? And then question is that also how does worm get code to continuously run? Somebody has to run it. 
how does it happen think about it right we are in this because we have very short time we cannot go through everything right this about malware so how does it find new user to infect no it, it, for example i mean every machine has an ip address right and if you are using ipv6 ipv4 we have 32 bit address and then it will randomly generate combination of 32 bit address randomly generated ip address it will use and try to connect to it or it can use if google is installed into the machine it will use google searches to find victims then it has, this could be a very targeted attack right it can say that ip addresses belong to a particular part of the world say north korea can be attacked or it can do scanning look for targets and then it can also have target list sub along with itself okay or supplied by the master or code writer okay 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 all right okay so it's going to use already existing vulnerabilities like buffer overflow and uh, x access vulnerability and so on right okay so how do you model warm propagation warm's propagation it can it can make multiple copies itself right so now initially one machine is infected it can spread it to two machines from two to four and so on so it forms a binary tree it can form actually any kind of tree more than binary ternary tree or whatever okay and more computers are infected like now here four computers are infected they can in turn infect a larger number of computers okay all right so it's very similar to covid virus right initially we will find out you know i mean when covid started in the first phase in the newspaper we heard that only thousand people are infected we are happy right may not happen right then next day we are thousand five hundred and then after a few days at 10,000, then we found 100,000 and 10 lakhs, 100,000 and so on and so forth, right? The spread is very, very fast. Okay, similarly, this worm can spread at very fast. And what happens at the end? When almost everything is infected, then it slows down, right? In the COVID virus, when almost 60-70% people were infected, or had infection in the past, then it couldn't find new hosts, right? New bodies to infect, right? Same thing happens here in the case of worm. So spread of the worm depends on size of the population. Portion of the population that's vulnerable to infection, there may be many who are not vulnerable to infection. And also number of infected hosts, those who are infected cannot be reinfected. Is already they have infection. The contact rate, how often infected host communicates with other hosts, right? Okay, so we can see that we can model this very similar to COVID virus that it, is, it starts uh, slowly and then becomes exponentially and finally flattens out, right? All right, we'll not go into it. Please look into this Morris Worm uh, history. Okay, it's very interesting because the guy is now prophet uh, one of the one of the universities right who wrote this morris form i think in mit or something this guy robert morris he was student of cornell and then he wrote the kind of first form that created a lot of havoc okay please go into the history of this we will not uh, get into this one please read this huh? okay last five minutes we'll look at the root kit what is the root in general what is root 
like super user for the yeah um, very good root password we say na root in general is uh, we call it for kernel or the one who has the highest rights okay when you root kit we say that something that can get into either super user a, a malware that can be in the, the which can use super user rights or which can be in kernel okay now this is very very dangerous kind of malware now it does requires lot of time and effort of cyber criminals to have a root kit okay so now we know about os right or kernel kernel is actually not full os but central part of the os okay which does the main activity then the os also is user part okay so kernel we say that central part which does most important things like process management file management memory management archive management device management all that is done here okay all right so this is a kernel user part anyway uh, is user processes so in user part we can have a root kit which is super user uh, root kit right so in kernel we can have a a root kit or malware okay this is part of os and below this of course is hardware so kernel runs on to the hardware right and access to kernel is always through system calls right like reading a file for example read write etc user program can use this but control goes to kernel kernel process right to do this task now if something sits here in that is in protected area this is a protected area right on top is user process and user process cannot directly do reading writing of a memory then it has to use system calls and comes here but if the root kit is here it can intercept all these calls and can do something different okay so it's a root kit is a mal code in os that hide its presence okay and this is we are talking about root kit which is in kernel okay is the most dangerous place in computer right all the security of your system is through kernel okay so this root kit of course can be part of uh, can be in kernel or it can use also uh, super user or root users privileges okay so we can have user mode root kit with the user id as 0 is a super user or kernel it can also use kernel mode process right is called kernel mode root kit where kernel space is compromised all right so in user mode it can do only limited things it can replace some utilities like ps ls ip config etc all this you know which ls we use very often uh, okay so all this are actually user program which in turn uses system call okay now system call cannot be no it means that ls for example will have code a library right and in turn it will use sometime or other a sys call so this sys call is not changed it cannot do anything but it can use different sys call or do something else right okay okay now kernel mode root kit is inside kernel right so when a sys call comes it can in, it can uh, uh, inter, it can uh, look at it actually it can uh, before actually kernel process do something it can intercept that and do something right so it can intercept all system calls that carry a file name or argument such as open change directory unlink etc and do something right now now root kit is not just a simple program it is set of program okay is a number of programs 
which is called kit. Kit is not is, is it has multiple things, right? Like cricket kit. It has you know a lot of it will have gloves, it will have you know bet or whatever, right? Okay, so root kit will also have a lot of software that is installed by attacker that has obtained root privileges. So for example, it can have log cleaner because it will do anything, then logs are created, right? That logs have to be deleted. Okay. Or file process hiding tools, network sniffers, which sniffs are packets that are going backdoor programs. It will it will attach into the OS a backdoor such that now criminals can access have easy access okay key logger surveillance tools surveillance and session logging software eavesdropping software remote use of microphone webcam sensors all these things can be installed as part of kit okay all right and all these tools are concealed step this uh, achieved by hiding accompanying uh, malicious level programs and so on right typically installed after attacker gets root privileges okay so the example here this is uh, os or kernel part of os this is a kernel code and kernel data then it can install keylogger and backdoor okay uh, which will have high privileges okay all right and then uh, criminal can from outside use internet using the backdoor to get into the system and steal information this very old data microsoft reported 7% of all infection uh, is because of rootkit now what other example is that this is not this user process this kernel space and below kernel is hypervisor and uh, OA, uh, and hardware so now whenever there is a system call from user space the it goes through a call table you know for example it op open is used then it will direct then this particular routine which is in kernel will be executed which will sys open whatever right now if this table can be changed right if rootkit changes this table and changes the pointer it can go to evil open and from there it can go to actual open okay similarly this is uh, you know normally in a in a in a system there are number of processes that that are you know which are runnable and this is the data structures right it's a linked list or run list right so this is a normal run list and now uh, malicious software has to insert a, a process into it right so it can now change this data structure and and insert a process right so this can be done okay so now in order to find this out, we will have to continuous monitor the kernel data structure. Okay. And integrity of kernel data structures. With that, integrity of kernel data structure, we can always find out. We can find out something has gone wrong. Okay. Or if there is a rootkit. Now rootkit is extremely difficult to find out. Very, very difficult. And it's a very dangerous thing, right? Because it has all privileges right and this root kit can also be there in mobile because mobile is nothing but a powerful computer and it's very dangerous because uh, once it's a key logger it already uh, and backdoor you know while you are sleeping your bank account can be cleaned up it will have a user uh, it will you know the key logger can find out your user id and password from outside it will log into your account it will create a new user you possibly won't notice it for some time after that it will uh, transfer some fund to new user that itself 
and you will get an OTP. OTP is read by the malware that sits on your mobile and then back through backdoor is communicated to cyber criminals. So they will know OTP or your fund is transferred, right? Okay. So what we have said today is both worms, rootkit and how virus can evade its detection. All right. Okay. Any question?